Hello, hello, and welcome to episode number 120 on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. My guest all of this week is Sharon from Celebrate Messiah. Sharon was born in Jerusalem. She speaks fluent Hebrew. She was a Jew up until I think it was 18 or 19 years old, has an incredible personal testimony, and has also studied biblical Hebrew. So she's got a lot of wisdom in this space, and I'm so excited to have her all of this week. Now, before we get into today's Bible verse, I do want to take a moment to talk about an incredible sponsor, CBM, Christian Blind Mission. They are wanting to have your help and your support in providing miracles sight-saving surgery. That's what that miracle is. And for $33, you can do that. The link to that is in the description below, or you can head to miraclesday.com.au. Time now, though, to check out today's Bible verse. Proverbs 22, 24 to 25, from the MSG. Don't hang out with angry people. Don't keep company with hotheads. Bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected. I've got the amazing Sharon here in studio with me. So good to have you. Good to be back. (laughs) Now, today we are, it's interesting because yesterday's verse, we were talking about similar things, being quite decisive about who you are as a person, choosing what to do, what not to do within yourself. It's another verse full of full stops. Yes. Don't and you must and don't. Yeah. And this one is talking about your relationships with other people. It's saying, don't hang out with angry people. Don't get infected. Some really interesting, like highly challenging charged words in in this one um what was your first impression of this verse yeah well look i i was looking at this verse and thinking oh my goodness i've had the really good fortune of not really hanging out with angry people or with hot heads but um i was thinking wow you see some people around you who explode sometimes and you think wow they're like a volcano they're unpredictable such people could be quite charismatic Mm. and quite interesting to be around so I could see the attraction of keeping company with hotheads they can kind of sweep you along with them but I think they could be dangerous and unpredictable, volatile, mm. unstable. So it was reminding me of a volcano, like people who live on a volcano because yeah. it's so fertile and attractive and grows anything you want. But every now and again, it <laughs> blows up and <laughs> takes you with it. So. Yeah, I think that is such a good analogy there because I, I don't think of it that way, but it's so true. Um, people who are generally uh, very you know, volatile and have a bit of a hot head also tend to be really popular also tend yeah. to be the kind of person that you want to hang out with and actually my story I think links in really well with um, with what you just shared so we'll get to that a little later but one of the questions I love asking is what does this verse tell you about who God is or what he values yeah well this verse is the complete opposite of who God is he God we, we are told he's kind he's slow to anger he's quick to love he's patient he's so patient and he's kind to us so like this is the opposite so in other words don't hang out with people who are opposite to who God is. Mm. We're supposed to be like God, be imitators of Christ as dearly loved children. Yeah, and I think it's so important as well, um, the company you surround yourself with. We did an episode not too long ago about, um, I think it was company and bad people. or Bad company corrupts good character. I know, I remember listening to it. That's the one, yeah, yeah. and this is the same thing, especially if you've got someone who's so highly charged and um, charismatic, you can't help but be swept into their life and their way of living and and all of that so it's something to be uh, cautious around and so I wanted to share a little bit of my own story with this one because as you said before thankfully you haven't had too much experience in this space (laughs) yes I was quite (laughs) relieved (laughs) Uh, but I've got a story for today so I had uh, a friend in high school who was so much fun man I loved being around her. She was full of life. She had the best jokes. She just knew how to win everyone over. And I felt strangely honored to be her friend. Like, I felt really like, wow, and you want to hang out with with me? Okay, all right. And, and, And I think looking back, one of the reasons why I think it worked was because I didn't provide any resistance. Um, I was very happy to go along with all her quips, all her digs at other people, and I didn't really say anything. I didn't participate. I was a very good sidekick, I think, <laughs> and just um, you were convenient. I was convenient, right. yeah. 
and I, unfortunately, it also meant that I was conveniently the person next to her whenever she had a bad day or Ouch. had a bad night's rest. So or the volcano erupts. Yeah. And it took me years, years and years, because here's the thing. She wasn't like this every day. It was like once in a blue moon, once in a couple of months, she would just blow up and I would feel awful and I'd feel so upset. I'd be crying and mothers always know. My mum would often say, Joy, you need to let her go. But I felt the strange wow, sense of, advice. yeah, I mean, mums t- generally tend to see bad friends a yeah. mile before you do. Yep. So, um Mum said, you know, I I don't think she's a good friend for you. I didn't listen for many years because I had this strange sense of loyalty towards this person. And I remember there was this particular time where she didn't want to talk to me. This happened frequently where she'd just kind of not message me at all and would punish me in those ways. And it coincided with... uh, Another thing in my life, I think I literally lost my phone. (laughs) So I lost my phone. She didn't want to message me. So for two months or something, we didn't have contact. Two months without your phone? How did you survive? I don't think I would. Well, here's the thing. I'd lost my phone so many times that mum and dad were like, nope, until you can save up (laughs) and buy your own, (laughs) we're not getting you another one. So it was a blessing. It was truly a blessing because um, a couple of weeks into it, I was feeling bad and I didn't know how to fix the situation. And then into the third week, I was like, wow, I, I I feel better. This is kind of nice not have not being on edge all the time and about a month into it I realized my goodness I was carrying a lot I needed a break wow. from this person and by the time situations had changed I came to a point where I realized um I I was I was being infected by this person I was infected by their moods their life and and I'm I'm not saying that they were a bad person themselves it's just that the combination of myself and them wasn't good I think if we were to meet today 10 years later I think would would get along really well because now I've got boundaries now I'm a bit older now I can see things coming but back then I just didn't have the skills and so I realized that actually life was a lot better without this person. And so I guess the lesson I learned in my own life was that bad temper is contagious. It doesn't mean that you become a a person who also has a bad temper. I think other things get transferred, things like fear, things like stress. Um, Bad temper, I think, is contagious because you affect the people around you and everyone's affected in different ways. Some people do reflect back a bad behavior, also reflect back a temper. Um, Some people become very quiet and shut down. Um, And it does take, I think, that distance, saying to yourself, I need space before you realise the impact someone can have on you. I agree, Joy, and it reminds me of yesterday's episode when we were talking about God wanting us to think, step back from a situation, give ourselves a time to think and to reflect and to then behave in a deliberate manner. And it looks like you you losing your phone was such a blessing because (laughs) it it forced you to take a step back from your friend and realise the damage that she was causing, not intentionally, we know, but still affecting you and bringing out all that fear in you and that stress for you. Mm. So it it really helped you to take a step back and be like God in the sense that you can think and reflect and then act with intentionality. And I'm glad you left her, uh, had that gap from her because it does sound like she she wasn't really a very good friend to you. And I think another thing in that was I felt guilty for a long time afterwards because I felt I was the only person she could talk to I'm so horrible because I um I couldn't be there for her and I've learnt over the years that you can't rescue everyone and it's not your job to be everyone's best friend it's yep. not your job to solve everyone's problems it's not your job to be the emotional dumping ground all the time that is such a hard lesson to learn in uh, in judaism we call it the messiah complex no oh. yeah it's got a name right because <laughs> we do get sometimes caught in the idea that we need to be everyone's messiah everyone's redeemer everyone's rescuer and it's wrong i'm so glad that you had an opportunity to learn the boundaries to stay away from angry people
the point Sharon made was so insightful because the reason we hang out with those kinds of people, even though it really doesn't make sense on paper, is because they often also tend to be highly charismatic, maybe popular. They might make you feel good 95% of the time and the other 5% just treat you like rubbish. And I think that's a thing I really want to focus on today. I spent many years uh, supporting the treatment this friend gave me because she was nice all the other times. And it came back to me re-evaluating my standards for friendship, my standards for people around me. And it doesn't always mean, for me personally anyway, that that person agrees with absolutely everything I say. No, it's mostly got to do with value and respect. If this person doesn't value and respect me, even when we disagree, then I'm not entirely sure if you're the kind of person I want to be engaging with. Now, we can be polite, we can be professional, we can still say hello, but to allow that person into your inner circle, that might mean they will infect you and you will walk around with wounds and go on bleeding on others. And so that's something I do want to pose to you today, a question around maybe someone in your life who you love spending time with most of the time, but when you get that flare up, it really does impact you. And maybe today could be the day you ask yourself whether you need to apply this verse, need to limit the time or limit the conversation areas or limit something in order to protect yourself and to protect your heart. Proverbs 22 verses 24 to 25. Don't hang out with angry people. Don't keep company with hot heads. Bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected. Well, that wraps up today's episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. Hey, do leave a written five-star review if you've been loving this podcast. And if there's been a specific episode that's really impacted you, I'd love to hear about it. And that way, I know this is a subject that we can further expand on and I can chat through with the podcast guests. You can send a message through to the Everyday Joy inbox below. Hey, I so look forward to catching up again tomorrow right here on the Everyday Joy podcast podcast.